I have many examples that start from the things that can be done already today. So first of all, I often speak about this bike ridership on, a, on any street. And if any city asks me, do you know, like, is, is there a good kind of starting point? What would you like to implement? And I say, I know there are people having this counter and they have this computer vision and recognition and they know exact number on that particular street. And when I ask the other people before mentioning the number and I say, guess, and they, again, the random guesses come out. I say, why don't we just put one screen, just one, one screen that people would see the number. And that's it, we take away all of this conceptions, biases, the, all of the imagined implied answers that people create for themselves, starting from very basic technology. So that's one, but I have more passion about the other one because it's really about the thing we everyone pretty much does on a weekly basis, sometimes even every second day, which is groceries. So data is all there, all the experience, all the products are counted, everything is on your receipt. First of all, we have the printers and those printers can print your products in different color. <laughs> Once we implement, and for example, we can start with two colors, more healthy product. If you speak about groceries, it will be green and, and maybe not that healthy product would be red. Imagine if on your receipt, you see by the different ink printed, the greens uh, would be the healthy selections and the reds would be possibly unhealthy. You even look at your receipt from a distance and you see what's the split, whether there's more red or more green. Then you can introduce yellow if you want. But then the same thing, you, we can scale it up so easily because all of the shopping cart content is in their database. And from a database, the data can be used and that can be used to project for the individual, maybe at the counter, but then also aggregate on the screen in the supermarket or somewhere on the wall. And then for the urban space and urban interaction, we even have this color to be lit outside, especially in the dark part of the day. So you see the grocery stores on your street and, and they just project not what they say to be done, but what the other people today have purchased and what was the split percentage wise. And if there were more green percentage of the all of the shopping carts today, then it lights up more greener. And if it's not, then it goes to the other color. So this is how the basic already accessible technologies and available data in the stores can be just made more visualized and actually more interactive. People always ask me, okay, who will decide whether the products are healthy or unhealthy? Whether they will, uh, who will decide whether that particular activity or behavior in that community is positively evaluated or negatively. And I always stay away from that because I believe cultures are different, places are different, people are different, and they locally need to really live by their own rituals, by their own cultural um, commons. So therefore, I'm not doing anything with that. And I don't have any recipe. I don't want to have any recipe. The only thing I, I, I can say if we leverage technologies to expose the positive examples of the behaviors or the behavioral patterns in that specific place, then you can amplify the spread of that positive behavior you've chosen collectively in that society and community. So therefore, it can be so that social influence by definition can bring people any direction. So therefore, we as a technology designers and flourishing cities architects, we need to be mindful that we, before we really deploy and implement, we have to understand that there could be this backfiring effect or the social influence one day would tell that everyone is purchasing red <laughs> groceries or everyone is doing something else. So therefore, social influence works effectively both ways. What we as a designers, as a architects, we could put some thresholds or put some smart or intelligent algorithms that would capture the moment when the exposure of the positive others is decreasing and we don't want the technology to amplify the social negative influence. So therefore, there should be a, a smarter or more intelligent, wise ways how we can pre-program 
algorithmically and actually not to kind of mislead anyone, but look at the larger data perspective backwards where we had the support and then we just changed the perspective of the time frame that we are exhibiting the data. So everything is data driven, first of all. So there is nobody saying anything. It's just what other people are doing. And then we collectively uh, from those who are positive examples, we use that. So that's, by the way, tool number seven in a transforms me design framework, which I give out to the communities and companies and students, which is a scientific collection of the tools applicable for tech designers and especially for the transforming cities. So therefore there's specific, out of eight tools, one speaks about avoiding this negative social influence. There are so many things I would like to test, but mostly it's not about how fancy technology we can get. I believe we can get pretty much very advanced technology of, of various kinds. I'm more inclined to those research scientific studies that would prove or would validate something about my personal and other researchers discoveries, what really makes individuals transform on the deepest possible human level. And I would start with a, with a very commonly and but present behaviors that are not healthy or not contributing to the well-being and flourishing that are frequent and would have a major impact to the societies and i would definitely use the basic idea that i already originated from this three-layered architecture which is tool number five which is data intelligence and transformation by projecting collective real-time behaviors to the outside, something like a screen, something like a color of um, light pulse uh, change, different kind of urban design elements, especially where the people get together in the squares or maybe in the parks. And those tiny tweaks would be communicating about the behavior of others. The other example that I'm speaking already for five years is uh, people are sometimes go in the morning for jogging in a park. And then some people can see the park from their window. And there might be this day when, they, when there's a heavy rain and people like naturally their motivation is combined by the weather forecast, the actual weather. And then it depends also how many others are in the park running. And imagine if in the morning and there are people have been there, but when you open up the window, you see this like 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and maybe you see one person or, or nobody, but those light poles, have changed the color slightly based on how many runners were this morning outside and see whether that is bringing more increase into that particular choice in, in this community. So always this whole scientific experiment starts with putting out the sensors, collecting data and, and, and collecting the baseline. And then we start with introducing uh, some intervention, some kind of urban reflection about others. And then we see whether that brings an increase on top of that baseline. So parks with the, with the activities, grocery stores with the purchases. And there's also not only all of the data that is at the counters, but also there could be smart carts where you place stuff in your cart and the cart is signaling you by the colors. So all of those ideas are something that can be done already today.